Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Untangle 101 webinar series. Today, we'll be showcasing how our software solution, NG Firewall, is an ideal fit for SMBs that have limited budgets and limited IT resources. Um, my name is Shannon Bonfiglio. I'm part of the marketing team here at Untangle, and I'll be your host today. I have Chad McNaughton, one of our sales engineers, and he's going to walk us through the presentation and demonstration. So just a few housekeeping rules before I pass it over to Chad. Um, please be sure you are selecting the correct audio preference. On the right-hand side, you'll see that you can use your computer speakers or to dial in and, and use a phone. If you do select to use a phone, you will need to use um, the access code that is provided. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded um, and it will be uploaded on the Untangle YouTube channel within 24 hours after this has ended. So you'll be able to share or rewatch it um, with anyone you wish. As always, um, we'll be answering questions throughout the presentation. Uh, so please just submit those through the Q&A box on the right-hand side. We have a few staff members on hand um, to help answer those questions. If we don't get to your question um, or if you have a specific support question, uh, please email us, support at untangle.com, or if you have a sales question interested in learning more about Untangle, sales at untangle.com. And with that, I'll pass it over to Chad. All right. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, yeah, and thanks again, everyone, for hopping on with us here. Um, as Shannon mentioned, this is an Untangle 101 webinar. Uh, these are, you know, a little bit lighter dives. We're not going to jump into, you know, application system architecture, that kind of stuff. What we're going to talk about is basically the changing SMB market for cybersecurity. Um, we will jump into the to demo, and I'll show you so how uh, some of these apps will help protect your small business, things like that. But what we'll do here is go through some st statistics on my screen. And as Shannon said, this is all recorded if you need to go back and, and look at some of these numbers a little closer. Um, there is a pretty interesting opportunity in the cybersecurity world for small to medium businesses right now. Um, that's, a, that's a good thing and a bad thing, obviously. You know, small businesses are targets now, which has created this opportunity. But as you can see, uh, the numbers are not, are not decreasing. You know, um, small businesses are targets. Basically, everyone is in 2018. So for one, uh, cloud adoption is actually changing the network security landscape for SMBs. Um, you know, as Shana said, this is this is for you know small businesses that maybe don't have the budget to have a dedicated network administrator, a dedicated you know uh, uh, CISO, things like that. So Untangle can help with things like that. Um, cyber criminals are seeing SMBs as easy targets now, unfortunately, and it's because of the the factors I just mentioned. They assume you don't have dedicated resources, you don't have a a strong infrastructure, gateway protection, things like that. SMBs are becoming aware of the growing threat. Obviously, you can see, you know, we've crossed the billion dollar mark. You know, I mean, that's it, it's pretty crazy. Twenty six billion dollars in security, cybersecurity opportunities. But, you know, in the actual ransomware threat detection, things like that, the numbers are growing and ransomware is in the billions for small business now yearly. So this is uh, this is a very. I, I guess to me, it's becoming kind of obvious to small business owners. It's a very concerning thing, you know, and as we go forward, something like Untangle would be a really, really good addition to your network just to at least help you sleep at night. Like I said, the main disadvantages are lacks of lack of resources in small businesses. You know, they're they're not always going to have even a consultant for IT security. So, you know, that's a that's a daunting thing when you start looking at the complexity and the cost of a lot of these type of network security solutions. So, as you can see here on my screen, about half of small businesses have experienced some sort of an attack. And we're talking about phishing, malware, ransomware, data breaches, anything like that. 70% 70, 70 of all cyber attacks are targeted as small to medium business now because they see them as targets, easy marks. And about 60% of SMBs will go out of business within six months of an attack. Um, that's the one that, that really kind of hits me in the face. Um, Untangle, obviously, will incur some cost, but how does that compare to the cost of losing your business? Right. If you get fished or ransomed for ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, what will that do to your business? So just something to keep in mind. You know, this is an investment, obviously, to protect your business. And numbers like this are startling, but this is this is coming from the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and this is just kind of the state of the, the world right now in 2018. 
So to introduce Untangle, Untangle is what's called a unified threat management device. This isn't just a firewall, it's not just a content filter. It's a, a comprehensive suite of applications, configurations for small and medium businesses. It's quick and easy to deploy and manage, and we're going to try to protect your business and your reputation, right? So it's a low cost subscription-based software solution. Uh, this is software as a service, or if you host us in the public cloud, technically firewall as a service. So obviously a lot of these things can help you save costs just leveraging existing hardware or choosing a turnkey appliance from us. You know, one of the great things about Untangle is that we don't force hardware on you. So Untangle hardware is awesome and it comes pre-installed with Untangle and you get a hardware warranty. But if you have existing hardware that would match our specs for your network size, things like that, virtual environments, you can save a lot of money. So that can make things a real easy plug and play setup and deployment, especially if you're using things like Command Center to save configuration backups and create policies. You can actually create a master policy template in Command Center and say, this is my policy for uh, schools. This is my policy for all my customers who are insurance offices. And we can push those policies through Command Center. Uh, speaking of Command Center, we do have multiple channels of support. You can get support a lot of different ways, whether it's through our forums and our wiki site or with a live support subscription. You can call our team here in Colorado and get help. Untangle offers proactive, actionable alerts, notifications, and historical reports. Our reporting engine is is really about as good as you can find, I think. I think it's it's becoming a, a somewhat of an industry standard, the way the, the reports are customizable and the, the, the amount of data we can keep. I did mention advanced support, so if you have a live support subscription, you know, we can always jump in and help you out remotely. You can do remote access from Command Center as well with one click through our SSL proxy server. And you get that seamless transparency. You know, as soon as someone logs on and, and creates a session online, we get pretty much a breadcrumb trail of everything they're doing. So it's a really handy system. It covers a lot of ground. Um, this can be either a router or behind a router in transparent bridge mode. So we also have a couple of different ways to deploy. But regardless, router or bridge mode, Untangle is an inline appliance. So this isn't a proxy, we can't do reverse proxy, things like that. But this is a quick, easy, one-stop device to basically protect, control, and monitor your entire network. So let's go over, let's go over a few of Untangle's products. So Untangle NG Firewall is our basic platform. This is our freeware, freemium apps, that come pre-installed on Untangle hardware with a two-week free trial. If you don't purchase any paid subscriptions, when that trial expires, you revert to our free package, which has firewall and reports and intrusion prevention, a lot of handy apps. With the platform installed, you can then pay for some layer seven apps that do like web filtering and bandwidth control and inspect mobile applications. So our apps actually inspect traffic simultaneously doing something called proxy chaining. So it's not a, or uh, I'm sorry, virtual pipelining. It's not proxy chaining, so what I was getting at. So our apps actually kind of dogpile an HTTP packet and inspect it all at once, and then it speeds things up. So the reports are also live and customizable. Um, we've enabled a lot of drill down functionality here in version 14 that's, that's really, really simple to use, which I'll show you guys when we get over to my demo server. Some of just the basic features of the NG firewall, you can see here, we break these out into some different categories. Um, for anyone you know who's running uh, like a, an MSP reseller business, you'll see there under add-ons, we do offer something called Branding Manager that allows you to, to rebrand the Untangle interface and, and pages to have your logos and your contact information, your verbiage. Um, we can use Directory Connector there under the Manage section to connect to Active Directory or OAuth or Radius for username password authentication. And you see there under the filter on the left side, this is where web filter, SSL inspector, application control come in. Those are really kind of the, those are kind of the three-pronged approach to filtering content on the internet now. Web filter sees URLs at HTTP, SSL turns HTTPS into HTTP, and application control sees mobile application signatures. So they all work really well in conjunction with one another to help filter traffic, regardless of where it's generating from. As I mentioned, firewall, intruder prevention, some of these other free apps are really handy systems. Um, we have some cool options now for things like enabling uh, 
uh, remote filtering, you know, with uh, less licensing using things like Tunnel VPN that you see there under Connect. That's a free VPN app that we offer. So keep keep in mind, we do have a lot of interesting options now. This is all available in a in a complete software package with big discounts for nonprofits and public sectors. But these are also available individually as a la carte applications. So so don't feel like Untangle is going to pigeonhole you into you need this box, you need this software, et cetera, et cetera. This is really up to you and what's going to fit your network the best. And obviously your budget, right? So how would you deploy Untangle if you were to purchase it? As I said, there's a lot of ways. So Untangle by design is a piece of software. We do sell appliances with it pre-installed, but you can use third-party hardware. You can use uh, our OVA file for VMware ESXi. You can also throw our ISO download into something like Hyper-V or, or Citrix Zen. We support VMware in the virtual environment, uh, that, that the hypervisor itself, as well as the Untangle. The others, we would uh, shoot you some information, some documentation on, but they work well. The other option now is the public cloud. So I mentioned firewall as a service. And we do have two different options now for actually installing Untangle into Amazon Web Services. So we could install it there basically as a firewall protecting servers like a data center, or we could route your traffic to the cloud and use it there to filter everyone. So that's an interesting thing we're doing. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff uh, moving into the cloud in our industry, and we're keeping up and doing some cool things as well because uh, the Amazon uh, installation is a is a really cool option if you have Amazon infrastructure. If not, obviously it's 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 another product to learn and another uh, bill to set up basically. But for folks that have their infrastructure there, like some of Untangles, that's a really really neat option because you can just spin up another Amazon machine instance for your Untangle. So as I said, this is kind of a hybrid cloud product. You know, we manage it through the cloud but it can be an on-premise box. So regardless, whether it's fully virtualized in the cloud or a piece of hardware on site, it's still kind of a hybrid product. Um, when you run through our setup wizard in Untangle, it'll ask you to connect to the Untangle cloud. That is always something that you're going to opt into. We never connect you to our cloud by default. Please say yes or no. Uh, the virtual pipelining I mentioned, you know, we don't do the proxy chaining uh, in packet inspection because that's become kind of inefficient. So basically when SSL inspector decrypts a packet to HTTP from HTTPS, like I said, virtual pipelining lets all of our apps simultaneously inspect that HTTP packet. Then if anything's found, it takes its actions. If not, it's re-encrypted and then thrown right back out. And again, you know, Untangle runs Linux Debian, so it can have a pretty light hardware footprint. You know, we run on pretty small, cheap hardware. You know, it could be yours or ours. Um, if you go on untangle.com, uh, there's an appliances page. You can look and see what all op uh, the offerings we have on the hardware side, as well as the technical specs, in case you're looking at your own hardware to match up. Scout IQ is a really cool system that's included in both our versions of Virus Blocker at no additional charge. What this is doing is uh, aggregating data from uh, Untangles around the world and basically scanning that data in our cloud, verifying it. This is legitimate, you know, it's a, it's a tied to a piece of malware, you know, this is part of a virus. And then we're basically deploying that information to all the other Untangles that connect to Scout IQ. So it's, it's, a, it's a data aggregation system in the cloud. So this is another aspect of connecting to the Untangled cloud. So you'll get Scout IQ and you'll have access to things like Command Center where you can do remote management if your uh, server has eligible subscriptions on it. Scout IQ is just really identifying threats seen in the wild. So this is looking at real world infections uh, from an Untangled, maybe in uh, France, you know, sees a, sees a piece of malware with a new exploit tied to it. That exploit data would be aggregated into Scout IQ where it's analyzed, verified, or not and then disseminated to the other untangles that are connected. And as I said, this is included at no additional cost. It's a checkbox in Virus Blocker and Virus Blocker Lite. I've mentioned Command Center a few times. Um, <laughs> rather than just talking about that in passing, let me show you. So this is our cloud-hosted centralized manage management for your NG firewall deployments. Um, this is uh, around a year old, year and a half old. Uh, we've been doing some really cool things. This is one of our newer products, and it's basically getting development, new features, 
almost every week. Um, this is going to let you easily manage multi-site deployments. You know, you don't need additional hardware if there's no kind of you know management box. You can get alerting, any kind of threat histories, auditing logs across all servers. So if someone logs into a server, you can actually see that in the audit logs on a single pane on your dashboard. We're now allowing you to, to also manage licensing, uh, software updates, backups. You can also clone, edit, and push policies across the fleet. So this is what I mentioned earlier. Um, and there's, if, if you guys are curious, you know, well, I, we can, we've got a lot of documentation about Command Center and, and the, the functionalities it can accomplish. Cloning, pushing policies across your fleet of servers is a huge thing to me because this is what's enabling you to, if you're, for example, an MSP, to have a turnkey appliance and a preset configuration for a specific industry. So if you wanted to, like I said, you could have a configuration for doctor's offices, a configuration for you know, schools. That's all just hosted in your command center. So if you purchase a device for a client, you send that device to their site, command center can automatically provision a specific subscription to that server. This is just really reducing overhead. You know, there's uh, Untangle works with a lot of small businesses that have little remote sites that are, you know, two, three hours away. A, a business that small likely doesn't have a dedicated network admin, obviously, so that's someone taking time out of their day doing other things to drive on site and do stuff to get the box back up. That kind of thing can be done through Command Center. You know, we can do remote troubleshooting. Um, you get that one click remote access, as I said. There are some eligibility, eligibility requirements. Uh, the NGFW complete package makes the server completely fully remotely manageable in Command Center. Oh, and I should mention probably before I move on, your first five eligible servers in Command Center will be for free. So anything above five is when Command Center pricing actually comes in. So I've talked a lot about Untangle appliances. This is the line of appliances we offer. Um, on the left there, you see the X series. This is our kind of new line of smaller form factor boxes. Um, these are really cool. They're heat sinks, you know, they're real low power. Um, I have a U50XW at my house currently, and I love it. It's it's a really, really cool little device. Um, and it doesn't even get very hot, uh, regardless of being a heat sink. The box itself is just, you know, it's sitting next to my TV and is doing just fine. So our nomenclature on these devices is still basically tied to a, a device count. So if I were to tell you to get a, U, a U150 and your network has 400 unique IPs on it, we, we would probably be pretty undersized. So that's still kind of the nomenclature that you see here. A U150 is rated up for up to 150 unique IPs. So uh, fair warning, you know, that can come with some asterisks depending on the nature of your traffic, the volume, that kind of thing, session creation rates. Uh, but these are our appliances. This is all this is all Linux Debian. As I said, we're on Linux Debian Stretch now is the kernel for Untangled version 14. And all these boxes come with Untangled pre-installed. All you really have to do is assign any paid licensing. Um, each of these box, each of these boxes would require something like a uh, keyboard, mouse, and monitor if you're doing an initial setup, or unless we've done that for you. So you would just do that one time with keyboard, mouse, and monitor, and then from there, it's basically just a headless Linux server that you can access remotely. So I've kind of talked about some of these key differentiators in, in the course of this talk already, but I think some of these are important to hit. Um, in this industry, you know, Untangle is a little bit different. Um, when we talk about the small to medium business, you know, security sector, there aren't a lot of small to medium businesses that provide security to that market. But Untangle is one of those. We're, uh, we're built specifically for small to medium business deployments. Um, we do offer this enterprise level security, but it's, you know, kind of consumer level simplicity. We even offer a home package now for, for your home network. Um, it is a browser based completely responsive administrative UI. So even on a uh, physical appliance, if you have an untangled box right there in front of you, you're technically still using a virtual machine that it hosts there within the Chromium browser. The intelligent default settings are basically tuned to real world use cases. People ask me a lot about uh, uh, quote unquote best practices from Untangle. And this is what I tell them. If you're installing Untangle, the setup wizard will ask you if you want to install recommended applications or custom apps that you choose. If you want Untangle's best practices, our baseline filtering, you should do recommended apps. That's going to install the apps we think you need 
minimum. It's going to check the boxes we think you need to filter minimum. You know, we by default, web filter, for example, will block anonymizer sites, proxy sites. It'll block pornography. It'll block malware. So that is Untangle's best practices, just installing the recommended apps through the setup wizard. Uh, we also offer uh, policy management with a global top-down list as opposed to, you know, a really complex bottom-up list of policies that you have to start down at the bottom to see who is routing where. Untangle is a really dynamic policy manager, and the policies can be created in a number of ways, whether we're looking into something like Active Directory or just IP addresses or tags, lots of different ways. Um, it, we also offer automatic seamless upgrades, so your product's always going to be up to date with no downtime or intervention. Um, if you have that set right now, version 14 is a big long upgrade, you know, give it its time, et cetera, et cetera. Flexibility and being cost competitive is something else that I think Untangle is really great at. Um, what I was saying earlier is we are built specifically for these SMB deployments, you know, our, our hardware and software are designed for that. But Untangle as a company is still more or less a small to medium business as well. You know, we're at about 50 employees worldwide. So to me, that's that's different in this industry. You're not trying to get support from some giant monolithic corporation. You know, we we have five support techs that anybody who answers that phone will get you fixed. You know, that's why they win awards for us. So that kind of thing, I think, is is significant because it's a very different feel as a vendor in this industry. It's it's another small business you're working with. You know, um, as I said. Freemium basically is the download from Untangle. It gives you a free 14-day trial of our entire complete package. That 14-day trial includes live support. I, I can't overemphasize emphasize how important that can be for you testing and getting everything set up. So if you have your own hardware or virtual or cloud environment, you can download Untangle, get going on the free trial, and then you can actually pick up the phone and get one of our support techs out here in Colorado to help you through getting things set up. That's a great resource if you're testing or setting up a new network. You know, you can actually get your configuration saved and everything ready to go on the trial. Have that saved in your account on a USB, whatever, as a configuration backup. And then when you decide to pull the trigger and get Untangle subscriptions, we can just pull the configurations down in your backup. So that all that's all part of this centralized management. You know, we can do a lot of interesting stuff with Command Center, like I said. Um, and there are no additional hardware requirements for Command Center. You don't need any any third-party apps or anything like that. If you click remote access, you just get remoted in. So we're going to jump over to my demo server here for just a quick demonstration. Um, I'm honestly only going to touch on a few applications here. Um, if you guys have questions while we go, obviously keep throwing those into the questions pane. We've got a bunch of employees answering questions. But we will have a little Q&A session here before we wrap up in case we don't hit all your questions. So I'm going to jump over here to my demo server. So for anyone who's never jumped on, played around, we're on demo.untangle.com. This is always live. There's no password. And as you can see right here, this is actually running in Amazon Web Services. So Untangle will throw you into your dashboard if you click Remote Access from Command Center. Unless you have a specific URL bookmarked in the config, this is what you get. So this is version 14. This is our, our basic default setup for a dashboard. So this is you know, 10 or 12 or 13 of kind of our most popular reports presented as widgets. You can see here I'm seeing top host names by total bytes. These are the people using up my bandwidth. I'm seeing top applications by size. These are the people using mobile apps. And I'm seeing top domains and top sites by size. These are the websites being visited. This system can be customized to be anything you want. We like these widgets, so we put them here by default. You know, the, the CPU load, policy overview. The map distribution is a really handy one because this shows you sessions to and from your device. If you click on one, it takes you to a session viewer narrowed down to that country. So you saw I clicked on a session over there in China, and that's what it's showing me now. So the dashboard is very customizable. If you don't like these widgets, if they're not relevant, you can come turn these off. You just disable them here, apply that. You can actually come here, import or export widget sets. You can add back some common ones if you delete one of these default uh, server metric widgets. You can also come say, create new report widget. So maybe I just want to see uh, username reports. Maybe I have Active Directory, right? So I want to see usernames instead of IP addresses. 
these are all the webs or I'm sorry these are all the reports that offer usernames so if I wanted to come over here and say top usernames by request I would look at that you'd see that I don't leverage usernames and I could just add it to my dashboard from here we can rearrange that we can also do some interesting things in the report so I mentioned some new easy drill down options and these live right here so now if you want to change your dashboard and say oh I'm looking for all this information for a specific user a specific client a specific policy maybe I want to see what all the students are doing right now we can change that right here and that changes these widgets uh, globally to that condition and you can add more conditions here as well if you want to add multiples the widget system is limited to 24 hours of display information so you can see by default we're only looking at an hour if you want to go back further than that what I recommend doing is just going to the actual report so you can come here and say open in reports so now we're over here on my reports viewer and you can see by default untangles got all the apps installed all the reports are there so I'm looking at top sites by size this is the sum of the size of a requested web content so how many times are we going to these what percentage of the hits are these sites the, the reporting in Untangle is really interactive. All reports are customizable. We can create new reports from scratch even. If we want to create a new report from a, from a blank template. The actual top sites report is handy because it gives you really quick peeks into what's being visited on the web. These are the most popular sites. Some of these I don't care about though. These are work related. So I'm going to get rid of some of these. So you can see we suddenly have a Facebook problem on this network. Facebook is 54% of the hits. Um, it's 530 megabytes of data. So maybe I need to go block Facebook.com, right? Maybe I need to go see if they're also doing this on mobile applications. I can come over here to the application control, top applications by size report and do the same thing. And there's Facebook. So maybe I want to add this application control application is Facebook condition to all my reports. I can do that right here. So now I'm only looking at Facebook reports. So this is a really handy system. We can clear the condition right here. We can also do some really interesting thing with time ranges now. So we have, uh, let's see if I can find a report that's a bar graph. We have a very interesting time system now here in the reports. If I want to scroll into this time right here, it's going to automatically zoom me. But if I click apply this time range, it's going to globally apply this time range to my entire reporting engine until I remove these conditions. The fun thing is I can do this as much as I want and just keep digging and digging and digging and digging. And now I'm lost. I don't even remember what I was looking for. But luckily we have a time range history in version 14. So I can say, oh, I was I was four layers too far. So here I am. So that's a really handy thing. That's a, like I said, that's global across all those conditions. I can just come over here, clear that history out, and then we'll go back to our manual reports. So the reporting is really robust, as I said, under reports here. This can all be customized. You can turn off any of these reports, and we can actually keep up to a year of data locally. So that obviously will depend on your hard drive size, the size of your network, the amount of traffic, things like that. But our reports are really, really, really interesting now because they can be so customized. We can set up different templates showing different pieces of information for different users, all kinds of things. Um, someone in human resources, a teacher, a principal, for example, won't care about the usage on my interface or my CPU load, things like that. So we can set up really interesting templates based on what certain users want to see and they don't have to be an admin on the device so one of the quick things I'd like to point out uh, HTTPS encryption on the internet is at about 80 percent in the United States right now in 2018 uh, one of the big topics of these conversations obviously will be filtering the internet so that would be kind of a multi-tiered approach as I said earlier we would start with SSL inspector we would use application control for mobile apps and then we would come over to web filter and this is where we could say, I want to block all the sites that are listed as uh, bot debts. So those are blocked by default. These are those best practices I mentioned earlier. So our demo server is actually kind of a good peek 
at our best practices because it's it's sort of set up on those recommended apps with no changes saved. So you can see we're blocking proxy sites and botnets and command and control, compromised sites, malware, online ads here, pornography. So there's a lot of stuff we can block here at the URL level. If you're not sure about a site's category, you can do a quick look up here. If you don't think that's right, you can make a suggestion to our database provider as well. Uh, I will say as a fair warning that it, that button says suggest, it doesn't say submit. So if I were to say, uh, I think uh, I think Twitter is a school cheating site. Well, that that I, geez, that could actually be true. I don't know, um, but that would go to Zavello, who is our database provider, and they would look at Twitter.com and they would say, well, we disagree. We think that's social networking. Any URL can be in up to three categories in Zavello. So something like ESPN.com, for example, is in news, sports, and streaming video. So if you wanted to open this up without unblocking one of those categories, we would just create a pass site rule with some syntax matching. So this is your whitelist. Block sites is your blacklist. Pass site supersedes all blocking, but these could be imported, exported as well. If you have another service, if we're moving over from a, a different content filter, you're coming from a, you know, a Sonic Wall, a Fortinet, that kind of stuff. We can just import those sometimes as a JSON file. Uh, we can also get pretty granular within our web filter app. You can see these, the rules tab here. These conditions are actually pretty open-ended. I could do something, for example. Um, like giving a certain user access to a certain URL when they're on their mobile device or when they're at a certain PC when they authenticate. This is just a block or pass rule. So this is a quick way to do little inclusions or exemptions within a policy. So if, with, if we're within my teacher's policy, for example, and one teacher is doing a presentation on social networking, we could pass those sites for just that teacher until they're done with that presentation that we could remove that condition. So it's an easy way to just kind of tweak things for different groups. This is also where we can do some SNI content filtering. So this is basically looking at host names to block traffic. This is a very effective tool for blocking traffic on HTTPS if you can't get the untangle root cert to decrypt HTTPS on the device. For things like Android phones, um, this is actually how I, I filter my Android phone at home. I block HTTPS sites using SNI because this will still work without the certificate. What you lose here is just visibility. If you're not blocking a site like Facebook and I go to Facebook.com, if you don't decrypt my HTTPS packets, all you see is Facebook.com. You don't see anything else that I've done. You don't see the little trail that led me over to Candy Crush or whatever game or quiz I was on. So it's a it's a, an effective way of blocking, especially with things like BYOD. It just you lose some granularity when you look at uh, unblocked traffic, things like that. We also enforce safe searching that requires HTTPS decryption, obviously. Restricting Google Apps to your domain helps. Um, and we took uh, took a look at some of the reports. Uh, Untangle's reports are available from about three or four different places, whether you're in the app or on your dashboard, or running around in the reports viewer itself. So this is our complete package. This is everything we offer. Um, I was gonna leave this up here for just a second. Like I said though, if you guys are ever curious, you can jump on demo.untangle.com. This is what you'll see. Um, as I said before, Untangle's an inline box, whether we're installed as your router or behind your router, all of these options are still gonna be presented to you unless you're bypassing specific traffic. That's another fun trick within Untangle because under our config network, we have bypass rules. So because we license by unique IPs, active hosts, we offer these bypass rules. So if you're a small business and, and you're seeing 30 IPs, we might want to take a look. Maybe some of those are voice over IP phones. Maybe some are printers and fax machines, security cameras. What we would then do is we would put that into a bypass rule. If you don't want to filter something, you can say, I don't want to filter this printer. Specifically, this one, I would just throw in the source address. I made that up, but that's how it would look, and I just bypass it. And so now, this printer at this address doesn't count as an active host on my licensing anymore. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're if you're small enough to be below our unlimited licensing, the bypass rules can help reduce that, and it does reduce overhead on the box too. This is removing the traffic from layer seven filtering. So a a little visual clue. What you're doing is you're bypassing all of our applications. This is layer seven app filtering. 
And that's what you're bypassing. That rule isolates that device's traffic to layer three of the network model, where we can still do things like filter rules to protect them, shape their traffic with QoS, that kind of stuff. So we can still protect those devices, but you don't have to pay to filter things that don't need to be filtered. So keep that in mind too. I, I, I talk a lot about Untangle's flexibility and our deployment options, but we also aren't going to gouge you on prices like that because if we are seeing a lot of IPs that don't need to be filtered, we'll help you bypass those things so we don't have to charge you. One of the only other apps I wanted to touch on real quick before we jump out is Policy Manager. Um, that's a really, really interesting application because that lets us separate different groups with different applications. And I wanted to touch on this because you saw this on my dashboards. You saw the little policy overview showing teachers, students, et cetera. So this is where we can create a policy. We're allowed to give it a parent policy if we want, so you don't have to start from scratch every time. Maybe, maybe the default policy is a good starting point for everyone else. That's actually what we've done here. So default has all of my apps installed and teacher is indented because it's a child policy. You can see they're actually grayed out. What this looks like is default with everything installed and running and teachers with everything installed and running from above, except for web filter because they needed different web filtering rules. So for these teachers, what we have to do is come in and install the app that needs to be customized. Maybe the teachers, we need to block the Facebook mobile app because they use it a lot. We just install this into their policy and then we can customize it. So the actual policy management is a really interesting aspect of Untangle because we can get as, as granular or as broad as you want with policies. And the thing I like to try to dispel is that this is always tied to a username. We don't need a username. We don't need a, a, a group or domain from Active Directory, things like that. We can do this based on IP addresses, based on interface, based on tags that we can generate. We can also do time of day, day of week policies. Maybe students get Netflix less throttled on their lunches, things like that. Maybe even Mac vendors, all the you know Apple products could come into a specific policy, for example. So there are a lot of ways to do this. Then we just choose their target policy. So if this was you know, a teacher's rule, I would say teachers only. And depending on how I have them set up, if it's, for example, Active Directory and there's a group called teachers, that makes things really easy. And then you just say teacher policy. Username authentication changes everything, obviously, because no one gets around that. You know, Once they authenticate, we see a username tied to an IP, tied to a MAC address, and then we push them all around on Tangle based on that username. And there's no really, there's really no way around that. Like I said, if they have to authenticate, even when it's on Wi-Fi in the parking lot, we're getting their username, and that's what we're worried about, not the IP, not the MAC address. Um, for the most part, I think Untangle is a really, really uh, adaptable system, and it's it's easy to wrap your head around if you're not a longtime Linux admin or network administrator. As you can see, this is this is completely graphical. You know, we we only do graphical UIs. We don't force you to a command line. A lot of people will hear Linux, Linux Debian, Linux server, and they picture a command line. And I understand that, that's that's tradition. And we still offer a command line if you're a, a Linux expert and, and you need it. You know, We don't support a lot of command line changes, that changes too much, but this is Linux Debian. We're never gonna take away options like that. You know, We're very active in the Linux community and we always like to present more options rather than taking them away. So things like OpenVPN is one of our open source apps and has been, completely extended to allow any kind of custom configuration there can. It has big red warnings now, but it's very, very open. Um, that's Untangle for small to medium businesses in a nutshell. Um, let's jump over and see if we have any questions. Shannon, any questions so far that we could check? Yeah, some people were asking about the difference between the paid and the free apps. Oh, that's a great question. Um, actually, let me bring up the Untangle website here. So on untangle.com, there's actually a really handy little side-by-side -side comparison. If you hover over ng firewall, come to whoop, software packages. And this is where you can see the actual side-by-side -side comparison. You'll see the little free notation here next to each free pack or just a check mark. So when I do pre-sales calls with folks, I, I like to get kind of a top three jobs that you want fun Untangle to do for you top three functions, I guess. So if one of those is filtering the web and mobile applications, to me, 
you're you're almost already at our complete package based on the pricing if you were doing that individually because as i said before that's mobile apps application control and then urls you know web filter and ssl inspector so this is where you can see those if you click on one of these it'll take you to the individual page there on our site um, you can also go to wiki.untangled.com and get a lot of basically deep dives into these apps um, if you're looking for more configuration steps, uh, our installation guide, our user guide is here, as well as hardware requirements. Um, but yeah, if you're just looking for software, that's all hosted here on the website. You can get a lot of good information. And then if you want to, you can always post little uh, questions to sales right here. You know, that'll come through to a sales rep who can get your questions answered really quick. And then also, you can always see our pricing right here as well. So anytime there's a paid app, if you click on buy, you can jump in here and kind of configure your own products. You know, this is retail. So, you know, we always do little promos and, and your sales rep can give you the bottom line, the final bottom line. I won't, I won't put numbers in anyone's mouths, but Untangle is a very transparent company in general. I think I like that we post our technical specs and our prices. You don't have to go through 10 people to get a price. Uh, but we also have this quick little breakdown right here too, if anyone needs it. Any other questions out there, Shannon, that we could answer real quick? Um, yeah, someone, uh, thank you for showing the hardware requirements. Someone was asking um, how that they can, how they can figure out what would work for them. And um, we do have our appliances, like Chad mentioned, and we do, if you want to use your own hardware, um, we do have a wiki page that kind of helps describe it, right. uh, what, what would be best. And, and honestly, if, you, if you're still stuck, if you're just not sure how this would work, how it would look, don't hesitate to let us know. You know, you can give us a, a shoot us an email at presales at untangled.com. That'll come to me and the other sales engineer where we scope these kind of deals for you, that kind of stuff. Or just, you know, hit us up at sales at untangled.com and we can get you squared away as well. Um, someone is asking um, how Untangled can help uh, block, uh, prevent ransomware. Um, since that seems to be a hot topic of late, <laughs> along with phishing yeah. emails and stuff. So do you want to kind of go into that? Sure. Um, by default, we blocked phishing URLs and malware sites and distribution points. So that's a big thing out of the gate. We're blocking that stuff at the, at the gateway. So malware and ransomware are different animals, obviously. Um, what we would also want to talk about would be virus blocker. So virus blocker is actually running Bitdefender at your gateway. Uh, this is a really handy tool for doing things like scanning file types at the gateway. Um, we're doing a Bitdefender cloud scan and the Scout IQ cloud scan. That's what we talked about earlier is doing all the threat assessment and aggregation. So ransomware is tough because there, there's, there's no such thing as being retroactive with ransomware. If you get ransomed, you're ransomed, you know, and that's a problem. So you have to be proactive. So a way to do that is having something like Untangle at your gateway. Ransom, ransomware, malware, uh, phishing attempts, you know, these all employ uh, tactics against end users. Uh, I, could, I could talk to you for two hours about user education for phishing and malware and things like that. But something like Untangle can help because we can come in here and say, well, these are Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. So we're going to scan those at the, at the gateway now because those are notorious for having you know, uh, uh, malware, like encoded in a macro, something like that. So this is one piece of what should be a very widespread, comprehensive approach on your networks, uh, network equipment and your endpoints. Untangle's virus blocker should never replace your endpoint antivirus. But we're a really, really interesting first, second, and sometimes third wave of protection before it ever gets to your network. The way Untangle really technically looks um, is us sitting right in front of your local network. So whether we're in router or bridge mode, we're sitting there in between. So whatever's coming in on the gateway, if we're, we have our conditions set up and we're using virus blocker with Scout IQ and we're decrypting SSL, we're a really, really interesting solution to doing some of this stuff. Um, well, there's a lot of numbers and case studies on our website as well, as far as ransomware and malware go. Um, that's my bottom line for ransomware and malware is that there's no such thing as being re retroactive. You have to be proactive. So if you're letting stuff get through your gateway all the way to the local network, it's already there. You know, so you're you're no longer able to be proactive. So something like Untangle can just kind of mitigate that, and 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 again, maybe just help you sleep a little bit better at night sometimes. Um, but that's included in Virus Blocker, right there is the Scout IQ scan and the Bitdefender Cloud scan. Those are really really valuable tools. 
Great, thanks, Chad. Uh, we have a bunch of questions coming in right now. Um, there's someone asking, um, because we're, we license based on unique IP address, what happens if they go over the their current license, say they have 25 licenses? Oh, limits. sure. What happens uh, if 30 log in? How does that work? Yeah, that actually technically falls back into some of the bypassing we were talking about. So those bypass rules that I mentioned are kind of the, the behavior you, you can expect for devices that come in outside of your license. So if you have 25 devices licensed and device 26 comes on, that device is bypassed. So it gets access unfiltered to the network, which can be mitigated. You know, our support team can help you change that around if you need to create conditions that says, you know, anyone outside of my license basically gets no access. It's a little bit of a configuration tweak, but we can do that as well. So that's what they technically do. They they're bypassed. So it uh, something to be aware of for sure. Yeah, that's a really good question because you don't want that, I don't think, in a lot of environments. You know, sometimes it's okay. It depends if it's public Wi-Fi, something like that. But if you're um, if you're, you know, a little church or a, a religious school, things like that, you don't want to have anyone unfiltered on your network. So that's what happens. Um, the bypass rules can be really handy to keep a hold of that because I don't want, you know, device 26 being a printer or voice, voice over IP phone, pushing someone else out of licensing, things like that. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's about it for now. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please um, send them through. Um, yeah, what, I, what I'm showing right now is just our, our FAQ on the wiki. There's a lot to talk about on the licensing here. If you guys are curious, it'll break it down as far as you want to go with it there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Good on questions? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so as I was uh, going to get into here, um, we got a few questions out of the way. I wanted to show you guys, you know, we're not, um, <laughs> Untangle's not, you know, a, a startup, a new company, anything like that. We're in our 15th year of existence now. Um, we're getting a lot of recognition and uh, a lot of love on the community here over on Spiceworks, you know. Our user forums are actually really, really active and really helpful. Um, if, if you're an Untangle user uh, who has a home package or you don't have live support, Please don't be uh, hesitant to to post to our forums. Don't don't feel intimidated posting to the forums. It's not it's user forum you're used to. This is a Linux community, and they're actually very very helpful. Um, and and a lot of those questions on the forums are answered by even the the founder of our company, our our engineers, our QA team, our support techs, me. So. There's, there's a lot of folks on there who really, really, really know they're untangled. So don't be shy about posting something on, on the user forums. Even if it's your very first post, you'll get a welcome and then you'll get an answer. So we have a lot of resources out there and we're getting we're getting pretty big. You know, um, Untangle's winning customer service awards. Our, our tech support team just won us another gold Stevie award there. We won a uh, 2018 Stevie gold. So that's a big deal, you know, um, especially as a small business supporting small businesses to me. Uh, I mentioned this too on the site. There's a lot of case studies, a lot of just kind of, you know, quotes and reviews, things like that. If you guys are curious, jump on the site, go under resources. There's case studies, testimonials. Uh, a lot of that's on our YouTube as well. Um, we've covered a lot of the Q&A already. I always jump that gun because I like to get your questions while they're fresh on your brain. Um, and then I'm going to kick it over to Shannon to talk about some of our cool promotions that are going on right now. Great. Thanks, Chad. Uh, so please, if you guys still have questions, um, Please, we have a few minutes, so please just send them over in the Q&A box. Uh, so as Chad wanted to uh, mention, we have some promotions going on. Um, we don't do this very often. Um, our security upgrade program is always there. Um, if you haven't been on an Untangle webinar, um, I mention this every time. Basically, uh, this one, um, if you have a current Untangle subscription and it's old or you have an old appliance and you want to kind of trade up just to get some better um, hardware, or if your network has grown or shrunk, um, we offer a trade-up program, as well as if you're looking at um, competitor solutions or you have um, a competitor product and are looking to switch to Untangle, um, we do offer some special pricing uh, if you do choose to go with us. And then um, a new promo that we just launched today uh, is our surprise August promo. We hardly ever do promotions, so I would strongly take advantage of this um, promotion. And when I say strongly, 
I mean, we never do promotion, so. <laughs> um, it was a real have, surprise today, yeah. yeah it's a real <laughs> surprise for us, um, and for all of you, 15% off software packages. You can get more details on our website, uh, but it's only through the end of the month, so act fast. I know August is long, but you know, if you're new to Untangle or looking at Untangle, you know, give us a call um, or email us at salesunentangle.com. Let's get you in a demo. Let's see how Untangle can really help um, get you, you know get your network security under under control. Um, let's see, just seeing if there's any more questions that came in. Sure. Um, there was some questions about failover and way and balancer. If you wanna just briefly mention those apps. Yeah, so um, Wayne Failover and Wayne Balancer are part of our complete package. You can buy them individually, though. Um, they do a great job. They any any WANs connected will be there. You can weight them. You can set priorities with WAN Balancer. You can even set route rules. So you could say, I want these three devices to go out this WAN, and I want these devices to go out this WAN. Um, we we balance and we fail over. What Untangled doesn't do is aggregate WANs. So we're not a link bonder, a WAN aggregator, or anything like that. But we can actually kind of help with bandwidth sometimes too when we go into like uh, traffic shaping with bandwidth control and QoS and things like that. But yeah, WAN Balancer and Failover do a great job and they're part of that complete package as well. Great. Um, someone's asking if they have Untangle currently on their own hardware and they decide to purchase one of our appliances, is there an easy way to export and import those settings? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, before you do anything, do a configuration backup. Um, either to our cloud or to a, a you know, USB local computer if you have the app. From there, you'll install your or set up your new box, get it registered to your account where the subscription is, and then all you have to do is go assign the subscription to the server. It's a really easy process, and we have a lot of articles on our site on how to do that with screenshots and things, but it's once the, the actual subscription transfer only takes about 30 seconds. It's a real simple thing to do now. Okay, great. I think that's about all the questions. If we didn't get to your question, um, I do apologize. Um, we're kind of running out of time here. Don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, so please email us, support at untangle.com if it's a technical question, or sales at untangle.com if you're looking to see how Untangle can work in your network environment. We're here to chat with you, get you on a um, you know more specific demo if you're school, retail, government, whatever, whatever kind of in business you are. Um, thank you, Chad, for the great demo, and uh, we uh, hope to see you next time.